Let's scoot ahead. Group D. I'll just clear out for you here. Well, in our other uh, sports podcast for a, we like to bust the chops as Chelsea Football Club quite often. Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of space to do that in the women's game. They absolutely have their shit together. Let's start from the top. Chelsea versus Real Madrid. Come on. <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Chelsea has been the most dominant team in the, in, uh, the women's Super League in England for a decade. They're led by Emma Hayes who has obviously been in the news quite a bit lately here in these United States, as she has reportedly accepted the U.S. Women's National Team uh, manager gig and is set to take over after this season. I guess the resume is uh, impressive for the Blues. Six WSL titles, including the last four consecutive, five FA Cups and two League Cups. But you will notice there was one trophy I did not mention in there. Uh, So I'll be interested to see. I believe the final for the Women's Champions League is like near the end of May. And I think that like kind of coincides with when Emma Hayes is reportedly set to take over the U.S. Women's National Team. I am very interested to see how that's going to look. But let's talk about the players. Hmm. Captain Millie Bright. Then we have superstar Lauren James. Another superstar, Fran Kirby, who did not appear in the (laughs) World Cup, but is an absolutely fantastic player. Another forward, uh, the other Sam Kerr, you might be familiar with, uh, (laughs) also known as Australian Sam Kerr. Pretty good player in her own right, I would say. Then they have uh, Zakira Musevich, who U.S. Women's National Team fans will remember as Mm -hmm. the Swedish goalkeeper who terrorized them for uh, 120 minutes. Yep. Good way to put it. Uh, then you have Johanna Kainert from also from Sweden, and then Girl Wrighton from Norway. So again, we're just picking. I mean, obviously you have a wealth of talent over there in England, but we're just plucking some of the greatest players from from some of the other yeah. most like prominent women's footballing nations uh, that you have out there. So getting to like Chelsea's run of form right now, no surprise. They're sitting atop the WSL table, but I will just say, quick digression, they're only three points clear of Manchester City Football Club, and City was absolutely jobbed by the refs in the last game. (laughs) Oh, come on. (laughs) The refs missed a clear foul in the 82nd minute against Bunny Shaw. Your girls at Arsenal, there was a clear foul where they pushed Bunny Shaw in the back. I digress. I don't like to blame the refs for a loss. We could have won the match anyway. Either way, I I didn't love it. But Chelsea is sitting atop. I think that Chelsea is clearly, they're going to gun for at least a double uh, in Emma Hayes' final season with the club. And if we want to talk about their last result, uh, at least at the time of this podcast recording, and they absolutely battered Aston Villa 6-0. They're sitting at 4-1-0. And they have an expected goal differential of plus 11.9. So <sighs> turns out when you have a lot of world-class players, you're tough to beat. Yeah, 100%. Surprising. No mention of the shoddy goalkeeping in that City-Arsenal matchup. We'll talk about that later. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm a little bit conflicted. I mean, I love this Chelsea side. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, everything from Lauren James, Millie Bright, Frank Kirby, Kanarud, the Sam Kerr, Musevich. I mean, like... These were superstars of the World Cup, minus Kirby. But obviously, like, you know, I, uh, Chelsea is like the team that I probably dislike the most on the men's side. Right. But, you know, I, I watched that Villa match and I was just like, I'm into it. They're good, man. I'm not sure what it means to, like, as a, as a sports fan or if I just need to be maybe covering this in a more professional fashion. But I'm kind of pulling for this Chelsea side, I think. Looking at all 16, I haven't quite made my ultimate picks yet, but um, I think emotionally, I think Chelsea's sitting at, at the top of my table at the moment. You may be the first Arsenal fan in the history of the world <laughs> to say the words, I'm pulling for this Chelsea side. Maybe there was a situation where they needed Chelsea to win to like seal something, but that is an interesting dichotomy. But I'm with you. I think as Americans, like I don't watch... Like I said earlier, I don't have a beef with Manchester United uh, on the women's side. Now, I, do I like to laugh when they lose? I think I'm not going to lose that. But, you know, it's. I think as Americans, we have that luxury. Do we like the players? Do we like the manager? Do we like the kind of way they play? I think we can do that. I don't have to be straight down the line. Although perhaps I let my sky blue bias show a little bit when I started yelling that we were jobbed. And yeah, the goalkeeping, (laughs) mistakes were made at the end of that game. It's all right, though. (laughs) Um, Moving on. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't have to get into that. Um, But as I mentioned up top, Chelsea is playing 
Real Madrid in their first match. Mm. And as Dino covered in the Group A preview, check it out on YouTube or wherever you consume your podcasts. The world champion Spanish national team is basically the Barcelona roster with a couple little bit of uh, Las Blancas sprinkled in there. Goalkeeper Misa Rodriguez, your two captains of the, of the World Cup winning Spanish side, uh, defender Ivana Andres, defender Olga Carmona, and then, of course, star midfielder Teresa Abellera, all were crucial to the title run. Totally. Yeah, especially that uh, the final. It's just whatever. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I just can't. I can't get it out of my head. But I digress again. But outside of those Spanish players, Real also boasts the absolute dynamite talent, Colombian Linda Caicedo, who made a huge Go. splash, gigantic splash on every highlight show and on social media with her absolute stunner against Germany in the group stage. But they also have Sandy Toledi, who logged more than three hundred minutes uh, playing for France. If you look at Real Madrid in a vacuum and their form in the young Liga F season, you might think that they're a bit of a flying death machine themselves. They are 6-0-1. They have a plus 11 goal differential and they have a plus 9.2 expected goal differential. But they are sitting in a distant second place behind Barcelona in terms of goal differential, where, as you mentioned in Group A, like I said, Barcelona's goal differential plus 26 to Real Madrid's <laughs> plus 11. It is safe to say it will take a gargantuan lift for them to dethrone Barcelona, uh, who obviously won the double last year when they won the league and won the Champions League. But I will just say, imagine looking a Real Madrid fan in the face and be like, I just don't think you have a chance against Barcelona. I don't think that goes over great with that, with that fan base. I think they're going to say, we're going to do it. This is the time we're going to do it. So for the purposes of looking at Real's current form, uh, if you count the last couple uh, qualifying matches, they're sitting at eight zero and one, and they gotta like their chances. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely a good observation to look at that Liga F table, just because much less likely they're gonna be able to take that title in the marathon that is the season. We mentioned Barca twenty eight one and one last year. So if they get anywhere near that, I mean, it, it's a wrap. But Champions League is a different beast. You know, yeah. if you make it to the quarters and some things break your way, upsets happen, much more likely just to brush off a little bit of our Tasty Bets pod, part of the brain, I would bet that Rail's odds are much better to win Champions League than they are to win domestically. So they got to be thinking kind of the same thing here. This group also pretty tough. And, you know, they get that tough first matchup here against Chelsea. But I think they got to be feeling pretty good about being able to make it out of this group. But either way, this, I mean, matchups <laughs> don't get much tastier than this this first one uh, in Group D. Chelsea versus Real Madrid. You mentioned it Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. This one might get the big screen on my end. For sure. I don't, I don't blame you. And I will say, you know, I often joke about the benefits of being a West Coast sports fan. Uh, <laughs> not for these tricky European games. Fair. So I, I got to say, it is pretty sweet for you that you got these three o'clock games. You know, you, you plow through your work. You get stuff done early. It's easier to, to flip on the match at 3 p.m. Uh, for me, a little tougher on the West Coast uh, to turn to turn on a football match at noon. I got to make sure I'm doing my job and make sure I'm doing the best I can for the folks I work with. So, but let's keep it moving. You'll find a way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll plow through. You know, it's a tough life, but uh, you know, I'll make it. I'll make it happen. Um, <laughs> it's group stage time, man. Get it pull it together. <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's get to the fucking hipster matchup because I feel like that's kind of what we're looking at here. Is that this is going to be a, a fucking banger of a football game? Paris FC versus BK Hacken of the Swedish league, Damel Svenskin, as we as we've learned in another episode. Paris FC, the giant killers, as I have come to know them, as I've gone through the research here, they knocked out both, my apologies to you, your lady Gunners, uh, Arsenal, and Wolfsburg on their path to get here. Arsenal won the Champions League in 2007. They are a staple of this tournament, and Wolfsburg are two-time Champions League winners. So for them to knock both of those teams out on their path, I don't think a lot of people had that, but they made it happen. And I don't think a lot of people had it because there's not a ton of big names on this team. They do have defender uh, Clara Mateo, who appeared in two matches for France during the World Cup. And then I think a lot of folks will likely remember goalkeeper Shamika Inadozi, uh, who put in some really nice performances for Nigeria uh, this past World Cup. 
Totally. But this team is fucking good, man. I mentioned in our group B preview that uh, Perry FC, the, in their most recent match at, at the time of this recording, suffered a 6-1 loss to Lyon. But I maintain, I will die on the hill. They didn't play that poorly. It's just that Lyon is a flying death machine. Before that match was played, Perry FC had a plus 12 goal differential in league play. And now it's my turn to plow through this pronunciation. But let me see if I can make sure this is right. Up, I think it's uh, Jetain Thine. Uh, she has five goals and an assist on the young season. Luis Fleury, Julie DeFore, and Luna Ribadera all have three goals apiece. So they're kind of spreading out the offense as well. Yeah. I mean, they just play like this kind of varied, a little bit of possession, but they will. They love to do that move where they, they run into space and then they'll pass back and they'll just kind of like mm-hmm. move you down the field and then go for the attack right from there. So I, they play a really entertaining brand of football. Like I said, uh, you know, they have the one loss to Lyon, but they're sitting at 5-0-1. And, and I think there is a world where that loss, that big loss to Lyon, kind of helps them look at each other. I always think about, you're, you're going to be amazed by this, I'm going to make a Cavaliers comparison. When the Cavs would play the Warriors, the indestructible Warriors, it always felt like there was one game where they had to like get up to the speed of the Warriors and be like, okay, we're not playing Detroit on a Wednesday night. <laughs> like We're playing the big team now. I think there's a world where Perry FC kind of looks at that game and goes, okay, okay, this is the level that we're going to try to get up to for, the, for this tournament. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So like I mentioned, uh, Paris FC, they're taking on BK Hacken from Donald Svenskin, the Swedish league. Uh, they're led by their captains, uh, defender Josephine Rybrink and midfielder Philippa Kermark. They also feature a few Swedish internationals from the past World Cup, including 30-year-old Elin Rubinson, who knocked in a goal uh, in the Swedes' win over Argentina, and she also converted a penalty kick against USA in the round of 16. Mm-hmm. Hacken's number one goalkeeper is Jennifer Falk. She played in one match in the World Cup, which is also the Argentina match, but she obviously mostly sat behind Musevic. Hacken is in a little bit of a weird spot because they are currently level on points in Damos Fenskin with their rival Hammerby, but they're three behind in goal differential, and they just suffered a kind of devastating defeat to Hammerby right on November 5th. So it's it almost feels like the league just kind of slipped out of their grasp in these last couple matches. There's one match remaining in the season. Hammerby is facing the team currently ninth in the table. That's Norkaping. Surely I'm butchering these names. Like I'm, again, I'm ordering <laughs> Ikea furniture here, but what can we do? And Hacken is facing fourth slotted Patea. They'll finish second this year and they're in the Champions League. I think it's it's time for them to, to have a go at it. But you got to wonder about kind of like how tired they might be. But I think that from the brand of football that both of these teams play, very similar to Group C, you're going to have Paris FC versus Real Madrid. You're going to have Hacken versus Chelsea. I think you're going to get a lot of games where maybe Chelsea and Real have to grind these games out way more than than people might expect. So I think whatever matchup we're going to get, I think is going to be great Like throughout the play in this group, like we, like we mentioned with Group C. But Paris FC, Hacken, Wednesday, 12.45 p.m. Eastern, 9.45 Pacific. I think we're going to be in for a scrappy match with a lot of skill too. I don't I don't think these these teams are going to be necessarily overly physical. I think we're going to see a lot a lot of great passing as well. We talked about this I think with group A where I think both these teams are going to be really hungry for the three points yep. in this matchup because for different reasons I feel like each of these teams maybe ha- a little bit higher expectations. I'd be less surprised if one of these two sneaks into the quarters yep. just because of the form that they're in or the situation that they're in uh, with regards to like a team like Hacken. So yeah, all in all, top to bottom, I think we're in for a pretty wild ride this Champions League. 16 pretty awesome teams with interesting players from star power to kind of like underdogs, young players to super experienced players. Like this is everything that Champions League football should be. And even with that little backstory of squads like Wolfsburg or United or Arsenal, not being in it, I think it gives us the opportunity to find some new players and some new squads who will be key players in future Champions Leagues and future World Cups. So, I mean, I just could not be more jazzed about this whole thing. All right, man. Champions League preview. I think we did it. That'll do it for this episode. But be sure to follow and subscribe 
into the channel. We broke down the qualification process. We dove heavy into all four groups, how we got here, what we expect to see in these group stage matches, and hopefully we provided a valuable look ahead with regards to what we expect from this year's tournament and this week's games. Big thanks to my co-host, Mr. Grant Engel. We are about to embark on quite the journey, my friend. I know you and I will be locked in, and here's to hoping our audience will be locked in right along there with us every step of the way. Yeah, man. I think we're just in for an absolute banger of a tournament. I'm just excited to watch, and I will see you next week to recap some of these amazing games. Hell yeah. Super glad to be doing this with you. Episode one in the books. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Looking forward to the journey. Enjoy the football. Enjoy the football.